So Overwatch is a multiplayer game full of cool characters with awesome abilities and mechanics. Maybe you have heard about it. And my boy Reinhardt caught my attention with his awesome shield, which started to tickle my VFX mind. So I jumped to Unity and decided to recreate it. And boom, just like that, I made it in Unity. And would you look at that. It's so awesome to play with this. Just look at it. I think it came out pretty good. And I'm really pleased with this. But oh boy, I was about to jump into one of the most complex shaders that I had to create. So let's have a look to the steps I took to achieve this in Unity. But first, just wanna say that this entire project is possible thanks to my patrons, and it's available on my Patreon page, links in the description. You can play with this yourself and you keep the channel afloat. So quick overview, Reinhardt's barrier is composed of three main parts. The 3D object, this thick wall, this crazy beautiful shader, and the fragmented wall. So, I picked up Blender, and I started with a plane, made some round corners, subdivided, made it a little bit arced, and made it thick, just like that is oh wait, and boom, just like that, we got Reinhardt's wall. Oh, and UVs too, it's very simple, but don't forget about them. So, once I had the 3D object, I jumped to the second part, the shader. This shader, look at this material, it's so cool. It was a pain in the ass, but look at it, it's awesome. And complicated, so complex that I can't even explain it from scratch in this video. But just for you, here's an overview of this technical monstrosity. It's composed of 8 different parts and probably more. Those parts are Fresno, main texture breathing, the PBR setup, which is metallics, smoothness and normals, geometry intersection, for whenever it touches other objects, hexagonal pattern, the blinking hexagonal pattern, ripples and cracks. But let's still see the most important points of how it was made. So in Unity I started with a blank shader, a lit one, transparent, and from there, for the first part, I started with the Fresno and connected to the Alpha, so it becomes transparent in the center and with some glow all around the wall. And for the second part, the main texture breathing, first I added a texture 2D to the Fresno. It's a texture like this one, where we have a bright spot in the center and some faded edges. And this is how it breathes, how it pulses, and this is where I control the brightness and back here I control the frequency with a time note basically controls how fast it will breathe then I connected this to the Fresno and as you can see it's breathing for the third part, which is the PBR setup I simply created two floats, one for the metallic and the other for the smoothness I handled the normals later, I created them from the pattern. For the fourth part, which is the geometry intersection, I actually recommend you watch this brackets tutorial on how to create a force field. The most important part is the intersection part, you will end up with something similar to this. The idea is to connect this to the emission and add it to the main texture and to the Fresnel. And at this point, the shield was able to intersect with the objects around it. And it looks great. It creates a nice glow, a nice highlight. And I was ready to move on to the next part, the fifth part, where I added a pattern. And I actually picked it up from Google, this hexagonal texture, and made it tileable, seamless in Photoshop. And back here, I can control how tileable it is, like 3 in the X and 1.8 in the Y. And then I masked the pattern with the main texture to create this new texture right here. And then all I had to do is multiply the pattern with the main texture and multiply it with some color. And this will be added to the geometry intersection part and connected to the emission. And at this point, I was able to see the pattern and control the color of the shield. It was already a pretty cool achievement. Now for the normals, I actually created 
a combination of the main texture and the pattern to create this texture right here, which then I connect to a normal from height node. So I can get these normal maps that I only needed to connect to the normals input of the master shader. And I got this nice texture, this nice bevel that reacts to light and it really adds a nice touch. For the sixth part, the blinking hexagonal pattern, I created this texture. It's basically hexagon on top of the pattern texture. It's basically a gray scale of hexagons. And this was one of the most complicated parts of the shader. I'm basically only gonna tell you that this is where I tile that hexagon feel. It needs to have the same tiling amount as the pattern, otherwise it will not fit with the pattern. And basically this top part is a duplicate of the bottom part. The whole idea is to use a sign node so it blinks and they are asynchronous. But the final trick here was to use a smooth step which allowed me to, to separate the less bright hexagons from the brightest hexagons. And since they are asynchronous, it will look like they are blinking. And then I control the amount I want, if I want it to be super bright or not so bright. This wall blinking pattern was added to the intersection part and connected to the emission. And that's how I got this hexagonal blinking pattern. Now for the seventh part, the ripples, I really recommend to go to this channel, AE Toots, and to search for the procedural water ripples. It's a great tutorial, but the idea to retain from here, it's how to create a ripple, how to create a shockwave, a single one. As you can see, I made a lot of nodes just to create a ripple, actually two ripples. I just want to say here that this is the shockwave without the hexagon part, then I simply multiplied the main texture alpha with this and I got the hexagonal shockwave, basically. Oh, and this was added to the intersection, to the blinking part, and then connected to the emission. So yeah, at this point I had pretty much the whole shader done. I was only missing the crack part, but for that I needed Blender. But look at this, it's already looking awesome. But yeah, this shader is quite big with a lot of functions. Anyway, for the next part I went up to Blender, I picked the annotation tool, and on this right panel I set the placement to surface, and this allowed me to create two circles on the wall, and it's super cool because then I used the cell fracture to tell it how I want this to be fractured. So with the cell fracture and with the annotation pencil selected, I decreased the source limit to 30, the clamp recursion to 8, set it to random and pressed OK and I got this. I actually removed the lines and created another circle and I got this better looking fracture. And from here I will create the crack texture, I will show you in a moment how I did it. For now I imported this to Unity, then I made sure it was the same size as the original shield and saved as a prefab. I also created a red version of the shader and applied it to each fragment. And what I also added to each fragment was a rigid body with gravity on and a mesh collider with convex on. I also used the script from a tutorial that I made a while back, this one on how to destroy objects in Unity. I used basically the explode script that adds force to the rigid body. And now every time I play this, the fragmented wall gets blown away. Awesome. Now that I had the fragmented wall, I was also able to create the crack texture from a screenshot that I took from the fragmented wall, basically, and added these nodes up here between the main texture and the intersection part and added all of this to the Fresno. And now I was able to control the cracks amount through a float inside the shader. I only needed to animate this via code. So for the final step, where I put everything together, I created deploy shield script, where essentially every time I press and hold the right mouse button, the shield will be active. And I created a ray that goes from the center of the camera to wherever I'm looking at, but limit to 7 or 10 units. And then I instantiate the shield. And the shield basically has a script that will animate the color, it will also animate the cracks amount. And once the crack amount has reached 1, 
which is the maximum value, I instantiate the fragmented shield and destroy the original shield. And this is the final result. So yeah, like I said, it's a pretty awesome mechanic, ability to play with, and I had a lot of fun recreating this. The shader was a little bit tricky to get it right, but I got it done and it looks awesome. There's a link in the description to my Patreon page, everything is available there. You will get access to a tremendous amount of visual effects that you can use in your games. Talking about Patreon, I wanna say a big thank you to each Patron that supports me. It keeps the channel afloat. And a quick shout out to the top tier Patrons, which are Elak Frost, Ari Koftikian, Bradford Errant, Curtis Ardaridzi, David Crew, Gillian Voy, The Goblin Plague, Hostile Mars Game, Josh McCormick, Jules Klein, Lord Byron, Mikhail Naz, Nat Sims Oitsk, Sverving Tree, and Unknown Enigma. You guys are awesome, your support is really appreciated. To everyone who watched this, I hope you have enjoyed, and I really hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.